Welcome to 2022. A lot of great sport coming up this year, such as the FIFA World Cup and the Winter Olympics. How can the Dugs hope to compete with host nations Qatar and China? After all, competing in those events is the dream of almost every human, right? Well, almost every human. Right. On with our contribution to the 2022 sporting landscape, the Dogs Playoffs. Today I'll be bringing you Game 3 of the Week Prescriptions and the Big Boats. Then Johnny will bring you Game 4. Game 5 has that exciting, if necessary, in parentheses next to it at the moment, but if it is necessary, we'll do that today too. Prescriptions have a 2-0 lead, so the Big Bones will need a good outing from Carlos Silva. You know he's motivated though, he spent his whole career trying to get on this team, increasing his weight by over 30 pounds from his rookie year to his retirement. He's opposed by Bill Daly, who needs no introduction, as we all know the legendary two-season pitcher from Poughkeepsie, who dominated hitters in 1890. Bottom of the first, and the big bones get things going, as Carlos leads off the inning with a solo homer. But in the top of the second, the prescriptions get that back and more. Brett Butler gets two RBIs on this single, and I'll admit to not knowing much about Brett Butler's career, but Wikipedia tells me she got two Golden Globe nominations for the sitcom Crease Under Fire, which I assume was after she retired from her normal centre field position. Todd Zeal adds an RBI single in the fourth, a man who never won any Golden Globe nominations, but did appear in two episodes of The King of Queens, so he's matching Brett Butler strike for strike. What's that? Well, that noise can only mean one thing. A big fifth is coming. First, an RBI single from Sandoval cuts the lead in half to 3-2. Then Sano, as he's done so many times in this tournament, orders up a two-run homer to give the Bones a 4-3 lead. Then it's time for that classic film scene from when Sano met Gattis, as Evan looks over and says, I'll have what he's having. That means a second two-run homer, and suddenly it's 6-3. Prescriptions have seen enough. The end of the Daily Show, and start the Cretlo Repo. Lou Cretlo gets out the inning, but not before Carlos leaves after collecting his second RBI of the day. So, 7-3, and Bartolo Colon comes in. First pitch gets Durham to ground out, but Gary Matthews wasn't called Sergeant for nothing, and he peppers a ground ball through a hole that needs fixing in the infield to get on. Just a day in the life for Bartolo, though, and his fifth pitch is not for the benefit of Mr. Zeal, who grounds to third. Colon throws a lovely heater and gets a double play with a little help from his friends. It's still 7-3, and the Big Bones look to be leaving home with a win. Colon is even getting better in the seventh, and although he pitched in Game 2, this reprise is superior to his starting role. This strikeout gives Colon six outs, four is the lead. But like Vanessa Williams, the weak prescriptions may have saved the best for last. Derek Jeter singles, and the bases are loaded with just one out. The tying run is at the plate, so for this clash, the big bones have called on the guns of Broxton. Jonathan strikes out Piazza, so it's all down to bottom. He gets it in the air, but it's not high nor deep enough, and the big bones are on the board in the series, trailing only 2-1. A bracing affair at the top of the Bones order, with their top four all having two hits. Jeter stole a pair of bases, but never crossed home plate, so it's time to do what the players on the weak prescriptions struggle to do during their careers, and successfully throw to my teammate Johnny. It's time for Game 4. Take it away, Mr. Paprika. So we are fresh off the weak prescriptions first loss in the tournament, and now we're going to see if the panic sets in. It'd be a hell of a thing to win eight straight games and then get eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. A loss today would even the series up and make that a very real possibility. Mike Piazza has different plans. That's a two-run home run, his fifth of the tourney. This has got to be cleansing some of that bad taste left by the World Series against the Yankees. It was the year of the beef with Roger Clemens. Earlier in the year, Clemens cracked him in the head with a pitch, apparently knocking him out cold. Then Piazza, magician that he is, purposefully broke his bat in the postseason and sent some of it flying towards Clemens. Clemens' response to this was to chuck the bat back at Piazza, clearly still holding a grudge that Mike's head got in the way of his great pitch back in July. Clemens' explanation for the bat chucking was that he thought it was the ball, which makes sense. If it was the ball, he was making the standard play of chucking it directly at the batter, looking to incapacitate him, and then tag the down runner with the projectile. 
On the other side of the ball, Tommy Burns cruising thus far. Here he is in the bottom of the fourth, striking out Miguel Sano. And he catches Kyle Blanks looking as well. That's his fifth strikeout of the day and brings up Jesus Aguilar. Well, that's not a strikeout. Jesus gets it to pull the game back within one. Aguilar has shown that Byrne can be hit and Carlos Lee was taking notes. That's a two-run shot, putting the big bones up three to two. Kenneth Vargas was the man on first who came in to pinch hit for CC Sabathia, who was having himself a nice game. His day ends at five innings pitched, giving up two earned runs and six strikeouts. So in comes Seth McClung, and with Derek Jeter on first, Mike Piazza is doing it again. Postseason home run number six in game four of the series. Absolutely ridiculous, and that puts the prescriptions up 4-3. to three. The big bones don't take it lying down. In the bottom half of the sixth, Kyle Blank says, When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown. And later that inning, Brad Eldred steps up to the plate with two outs, and that is a clutch single to put the bones back up one. These playoff games have been like two grade school teachers sneaking around on the side because they've largely been seesaw affairs. Top of the seventh and no one can hang on to the lead. The weak prescriptions have loaded the bases up and they're going right back to big sexy Bartolo Colo. He started game two, came in for relief two days later and threw two scoreless. And not one day later, he's back out there again. He gets Jim Bottomley to pop up, but that's going to be deep enough to score the run. Prescriptions tie it back up at five. Cologne limits the damage by striking out Winfield on three pitches, but we're all even now. So we'll head into the ninth with the score all knotted up. Jumbo Brown comes in for the big bones and surrenders a double to Brett Butler, hits Derek Jeter with a pitch, and walks Mike Piazza. So there's one out and the bases are loaded, but then Jim Bottomley goes down swinging. The teams are exchanging giant strikeouts. Dave Winfield gets the two-out chance and he makes good on it. Brett Butler comes around to score, and here comes Derek Jeter. He scores as well. Prescriptions take the lead 7-5, and that's where we'll be heading into the bottom of the ninth. First two men go down, but Kyle Blanks gets hit with a pitch. That'll bring the tying run up to the plate and Jesus Aguilar, who's already homered today. But that is a weak ground ball over to Todd Seal, and that will end the ball game. The weak prescriptions take a commanding 3-1 lead in the series, and they'll have the opportunity to be the first team to punch their ticket to the championship with one more win. Mike Piazza has just taken this thing over. Another stellar performance from him amassing his sixth home run in the postseason and his 11th RBI. Roger Clemens has reached out to us to pay his respects to Piazza's stellar performance thus far, and I quote, Congratulations, you stupid son of a bitch. I look forward to the Dugs inviting me to play on one of their squads and blowing your performance out of the water. Ha! Ah, what a sport! So don't count your winstrel before it's injected, Roger. We'll see. For the Bones, CC pitched a nice game, only to have it be blown up by Seth McClung and Jumbo Brown. Let's go right into Game 5 and see if the weak prescriptions can close this bad boy out. Hamish? Time for Game 5. Leading 3-1, the weak prescriptions can punch their ticket to the championship series. Or, as this is 2022, they can have their ticket scanned on their mobile device. It doesn't work the first time, angle the device a little bit better, avoid sunlight. Okay, there. Now you're in the championship series. They'll be looking to Rex Barney to take them home, a man for whom we've run out of dinosaur jokes. So let's hope he's chased from the game early by a falling asteroid. Big Bones counter with Jeff Neiman, and Jeff starts this game well. We're going to head to the third, still scoreless, and Neiman gets Zeal to fly out, and then his opposite number, Barney, strikes out. Neiman had only given up one hit to this point, but here's Brett Butler. Fun fact, in no Agatha Christie novel did the Butler ever actually do it, but here Brett Butler murders this ball for a double and gets the prescriptions for a second hit of the day. That gives Derek Jeter the chance to open the scoring, and Jeter takes that opportunity like it's an endorsement deal for literally anything. 1-0 weak prescriptions. Top of a fourth now. And Ray, if someone asks you if you want to hit a home run, you say yes. Ray Durham busts this ball over the wall for a solo shot. And then why is the score now 4-0, Todd? Because I hit a two-run homer, Margo. Todd Zeal with the second long ball of the inning and the weak prescriptions look, or at least squint, to be heading to the championship game. Not so fast, though. Rex Barney, who has only given up one single through three, gives up a triple to Pablo Sandoval to lead off the bottom of the fourth. 
Sandoval is among the leaders in triples in this tournament, which is incredible as he was considered the third slowest player in Major League Baseball in 2021, trailing only Pujols and Yaddy, both of whom are about five years older. Yet he's motoring in the ducks, which means either this simulation is broken and we need to throw out these stats and projections and reevaluate exactly what we're doing with our lives, or... Um... Yeah, yeah, it's probably just that. Okay, where was I? Right, Panda on third, Dimitri Young gets him home, it's 4-1. Barney has now walked the bases loaded as he struggles to get out of this inning. But he gets Pascucci to strike out here, meaning it's all on Carlos Lee. Carlos Lee had 17 career Grand Slams, and one here would give the big bones the lead. But Barney's is like a Denny's with supply chain issues, he's all out of Grand Slams, and serves up a can of coin instead. I know some purists will say a can of coin has to be to the outfield, but that's a high pop-out which is good enough for me. So the big bones blew their bases loaded chance, let's see how the weak prescriptions do with theirs. Top of the fifth and the bases are full of poorly sighted players, Jim Bottomley's at the plate. Bottomley was known as Sunny Jim during his playing career, but that at bat is graded a Sunny D as he goes down looking. Next up is Dave Whiffield, who is out swinging, but Durham, who home and earlier, is up next. That means a pitching change, and in comes Carlos Silva. Big moment in the game, and he gets a ray of hope as Durham flies out and the score remains 4-1. Missed chances is the story of this one. Here's another in the top of the sixth, as Rex Barney, who is still in this pitching, having only given up one run, bunts foul on strike three to blow an RBI chance. Normally I'd say bunting foul on strike three is an unforgivable lack of fundamentals, but you can't argue with Barney's performance on the mound. Except that after this, he immediately gives up this solo shot to Blanks. Uh-oh, and another to Adam. And viewers, this game is not done yet. It's 4-3. So let's go to the bottom of the eighth, where Mark is on for the prescriptions, and it is clear that that's a passed ball, not a wild pitch, letting Gaddis get into scoring position. Can the big bones tie it up? Dunn strikes out, so he's struck out and homered in this game, a performance that is so typically Adam Dunn, but it's reviving my faith in these simulations. That means it's William J. Boyd time. You know him as Bill, and the J is for just in the nick of time. That single gets Gattis to third, but EG wants to go home. He beats the throw, ties it up, and we head to the ninth in a 4-4 game. It is anyone's to win now, and the weak prescriptions come out fighting in the top of the ninth. Jito's on with a walk, and Mike Piazza has run the count to 3-0. Reniel Pinto, who may have edited his own Wikipedia page as it says he excelled in all the roles he was used in in 2008, this despite having a 4.45 ERA, thinks Piazza isn't swinging. He thinks wrong, demonstrating why, despite excelling in all the roles he was used in, he only had a five-year career in the bigs. So Piazza's on, men at the corners, no outs. Brunel gets a ground ball from Bottomley to keep the game tied, but Pinto's been out there long enough. In comes Jumbo Diaz, clocking in at £315 for big boats. That's 150% the weight of a baby elephant. Winfield can't deal with Diaz's power and pops it up, meaning it's still tied with two outs. But a walk loads the bases. What can Dante Bichetti do? A divine hit from Dante, and Diaz isn't laughing as two runs score. The prescriptions of one foot in the final, and Zeal adds an insurance run with an RBI double. To the bottom of the ninth! This is getting good! Last chance for the big bows, and the weak prescriptions turn to the 2011 Major League leader in blown saves, Carlos Marmol. Calling for Marmalade is good if you're Paddington Bear, not so good if you want to win a ball game. He strikes out Eldred, but then old habits resurface. Sano walks, and then Blanks walks. Gattis singles, and that loads the bases with just one out. The Big Bones came back from an 0-3 start to make the playoffs. They don't know the meaning of the word defeat, the meaning of the word hopeless, or the meaning of the word diet. Walter Young, the heaviest player to ever play a Major League game at £322, is at the plate, and wouldn't it be symbolic of the Big Bones if he could hit the game winner? Well, it would have been, but he strikes out. So that's it for Marmol, in comes Mitch Williams, and let's pause to recognise the history here. Mitch Wild Thing Williams gave up the winning home run in the 1993 World Series, and his career never recovered. Can he put those demons to rest against Adam Dunn? Well, you know this is going to be a home run or strikeout, don't you? Here we go. Home run or strikeout? Home run or... Strikeout! The prescriptions win the pennant! 
The prescriptions win the pennant. They advance to the World Cup Championship Series Super Bowl Final. What a game. I'm exhausted. You can see the stats on the screen for yourself. Big Bones Run comes to an end, the weak prescriptions incredibly proving that fielding percentage is less important than not being obese. Who will they play in the final? You'll have to join us on Wednesday when we'll have Game 6 and possibly 7 of the Union Jacks and Deliberately Offensive. The party carries on for the prescriptions, but for the Big Bones, the dugs are closed. <laughs>